Hello and welcome to another edition of the Madam Money class. My name is Tara Jackson, AKA Madam Money. And y'all know how I do every Tuesday at 7 p.m. I give you the insider information about everything dealing with your money, cash, investments, insurance, credit, everything. And speaking of credit, we're talking, but let's talk about credit, baby. <laughs> we're going to talk about some credit today, y'all. So I have my boy, Anthony Copeman, AKA Financial Lituation. He's going to talk about himself, why he's qualified to talk about this. And also, what in the world is financial lituation? What does that really mean, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm going to let him tell you that. But before he goes into that, I want to explain a little bit about my background so you understand why I talk a lot about credit and why I'm probably qualified just a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, as I grew up, uh, matriculated through the financial services industry, I was a loan officer. Um, I was a, a loan manager, collection manager. I have been a VP of lending of a credit union. Um, I've also been an executive vice president of a credit union in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was the interim president CEO of a credit union in Atlanta, Georgia. And so the number one way we make money is through loan interest income. So it was my job to convince everybody to pretty much go into debt. <laughs> I was really good at my job. <laughs> and then, you know, I repented, turned from my wicked ways and became a consumer advocate to teach everybody the game of credit, right? So I know a little bit about credit, been in the credit side of the world for a very long time. Also have a couple friends in the, you know, Experian and Equifax um, houses and we do a lot of collaboration with those so we can so I can educate everybody on a clear understanding of credit um, so that's one of the subjects that I really really love talking about it because a lot of people have some misnomers misunderstandings and miseducation about mm -hmm. credit and so in order for you to win the credit game you have to understand what it is a game who the players are and how you can win it's just like chess but too many people are playing financial checkers and financial institutions are playing financial chess. And if you don't understand that credit chess game, you're gonna get played. Mm -hmm. So Anthony and I are here to teach you the rules of the game, the players of the game, how to have some strategy just a little bit so that you have a fighting chance to win. I'm gonna give you some resources. I have a special gift for you um, at the end of the class. I'm also going to give, I, you know, I talk about financial fornication, I am going to give a few lucky viewers my book tonight. Yes, yes, I'm feeling generous. Every now and then I just feel so generous, so I feel generous. So we're going to get right into it because an hour is not really a long time. So we have our my boy, Anthony Copeman. What's up? What's up, Madam Money? How are you? I am doing awesome. I keep telling everybody I have the best social media friends ever. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Man, we, we, you know, all of my social media friends, we probably never met, you know, in person yet, but y'all are so freaking cool. One thing, one thing I love about you, you're always consistent. You're always asking the question, how much have you saved today? How much have you spent today? So I'm, I'm very inspired by the things that you, you post. And oh, well, thank I, you for all that you do. I thank you. I get a lot of hate email. Why do you keep asking that question? <laughs> <laughs> because they probably don't want to face themselves. They don't want to face it. They don't and it's really it. a rhetorical question to give people to think, but thank you. I'm glad somebody sees it. Yep. So that's good to know. <laughs> awesome. So Anthony, tell everybody about you, who you are, what you do, and you know, explain a little bit about this financial lituation thing. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about you know my background. Um I'm originally from Harlem, New York. Um, right now, I currently live in the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, which is Philadelphia. Oh, we um, are right down the street from each other. Oh, uh, yep. I've been here for about eight years now. I went to Temple University, um, graduated in accounting. Um, and really, my roots have been, um, and personal finance has have, have come from my grandmother. Um, she was the one who really molded me in terms of, you know, the basics um, I remember her showing me how to write checks. She used to um, take me to the credit union because she had we had a joint a joint account, and um, I would see her speak with the teller. I would see her make withdrawals, you know, make deposits. So those those type of things that she she has done, you know, really grounded me in terms of um, my personal finance, you know, experience, and um, you know, I remember. 
she was the first person I was with when I opened my first checking account and she told me that, oh, you know, look up um, which bank you want to you wanna bank with. And I did. And, I, you know, I picked um, the bank who had the most, which had the most assets. I remember that. Um, so everything that she really taught me really continued um, down the line. And, you know, that's why I'm, I'm here today. And um, I've been using the name financial situation for a while, but officially it's been since January of this year okay. uh, that I've been, been going, going strong and trying to um, teach, you know, millennials and, and you know, re- reinvent what they think about money and how money is used as a tool and reimagine okay. their freedom of what freedom actually looks like. You right. know, so many people think that retirement starts at a certain age you know, or living starts at a certain age, you mm-hmm. know, when living can start right now. And it's all about how you use your tool in order to, you know, get your life going and, and, and chasing your dreams. I love what you just said that most people think that, you know, retirement starts at a certain age. You know, mm-hmm. if you start early enough, retirement can start at 40. And for, yep. can start 45. It can start at 30 if you do it right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, retirement is just a an extended vacation. So the longer we wait to start it, the longer we have to work. So the sooner yep. we start, the sooner we have the freedom to do what the hell we want to do, right? Exactly. So I, I love that concept of it. And I love the fact that your grandmother taught you what I teach people in financial fornication about mm-hmm. dating your bank. Yep. about fi- doing research, finding, you know, and I have five stages of dating your bank. And I'm so, that's so awesome that your, your grandmother w- helped you through that process. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. cool. So tell me, tell me what is, what is financial lituation? What does that mean? Financial so, lituation. So lituation is a hip hop term um, that it means just a situation that's, that's great. You know, that's well, lit- over and beyond. Yes. Lit- yep. So it comes from the word situation, but it's a, you know, a lituation. And um, ah, right there, I felt old. Yeah. <laughs> and so I should have figured that out. Yeah. When I, when I came up with that, that term, it really kind of, you know, coincide with, uh, um, with literacy, financial literacy. So it's right. like, you know, financial lit, you know, tuition. So, so yeah. That's kind of millennial smart. That's that young money, millennial money. Yeah, you, millennial man, I money. feel old right about now. Okay. So one of the things that I, when I do my young money tours at universities, um, I love going to colleges and universities and teaching my young money series. One of my young money series is called Cream. Credit mm-hmm. rules everything around me, you know, from y'all know Wu-Tang. I, I'm yeah. not, you know, I hope you know. The last class I went to, they didn't even know who Wu-Tang was. So I really felt old. So y'all know who Wu-Tang Klang is, right? (laughs) Right. So cash rules everything around me, but I do credit rules everything around me to teach them about credit. And that's probably one of the most fun classes because we do a, we do a a game called um, Loan Shark after Shark Tank. Nice. And so we have fun, but one of the most engaging sessions is about credit. So there's a lot of questions on the millennial side, as well as the adult Gen X side. I'm a Gen X, you know. So let's talk about credit. Why is credit so, or why do you feel or believe that credit is so important? So credit is important because it gives you access, right? Either grants you access or denies you access um, and to financial services and products and tools. And not only does it like, even if it grants you access, you know, and you have not so great credit, it grants you access at an expense to you. Right. You know, so you're going to be paying more for the money that you borrow right. based on the credit that you have. Right. Um, so it's like a gap between you and saving a whole lot of money that it's hard to save in a, in a small amount of time. Right. Um, also, it prevents you from, you know, chasing new endeavors. So you want to start a business, a small business. If you want to, you know, apply for a mortgage if you want to even go back to school and take out a private loan, you know, those are the things that factor in when it comes to, to credit and you can either get approved or denied based on your credit score. Right. Um, I agree with you that credit is meant to provide some form of access. It is, mm-hmm. it is to provide, um, 
I, I call it to be leverage. It's leverage, not a lifesaver, okay? So when credit becomes a lifesaver, it could drown you like an anchor, okay? Because that lifesaver is eventually gonna be so heavy and so much that it pulls you down like an anchor. So you have to think of it as leverage. It gives you leverage to get the house because you don't have $500,000 at one time, so you can pay it over time. It could help you with cap business capital. So I absolutely agree with you that, mm -hmm. credit, you know, and, and it's always good with those type of situations to use OPM, other people's money. And it's much better to use OPM for cheap. You know what I'm saying? So, we're, and we're going to talk about how you can get OPM for really, really cheap in a little bit. Cool. Um, so what are you, you, we, we know that there are several types of credit, but the, what are the types of credit? So we have um, installment credit and we have revolving credit. So installment credit is simply um, those loans or credits that you have to pay over time. So it's a set amount of payment during a set period of time. Mm -hmm. So basically those include your student loans, uh, mortgage payments. Um, so, you know, you may have a $200 balance each month and it's due, you know, in a 60 month span, you know, that's an installment. So the fixed um, amount of time and a fixed amount. And then we have um, revolving credit, which is um, your credit cards. So basically after you use your credit, you know, you can use it again. So it's not like, you know, after you're done with it, you can throw it away. You can still use it, you know, as long as it's not above um, the limit that you have. Okay. So the two main types is your installment and your revolving. Your installments are your personal loans. Mm -hmm. If you're with a credit union, it's called a signature loan. Um, your mortgages, your auto loans, um, anything that is technically a loan, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have a certain amount of time and you have a payment every month until the end of that period of time, okay? It's what's, what we call in the financial services realm a closed-end loan, which means like you think of a conversation. Closed in conversation is I ask, how are you? The response is fine. That ends that conversation. I have to ask you another question in order to start the next series of questions, right? And so once you get that loan, you pay that loan off. And if you want to know another loan, you have to reapply to get another loan, okay? So that's what's called closed in loans or um, th those installment loans for an installed period of time. Then the revolving of what he mentioned are your lines of credit your credit cards, um, personal lines of credit, overdraft lines of credit, um, home equity lines of credit, which means you have a credit limit. There's no set period of time where there may be a set period of time, but you're able to use it, pay it off, use it again, pay it off, use it and pay it off and so forth, right? And your payment is based on your balance. So if you have a zero balance, you have no payment. But if you have a $100,000 balance, you have a $100 balance based on a percentage or based on a time period, right? So those are called open-ended conversations or open-ended loans. So for example, if I said, so what did you do today? That is an open-ended question and that could go on forever and ever and ever and ever. That's a credit card, open-end, okay? Y'all get it? You like it? Okay. The teacher, the teacher's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. So that's cool. So what are the, you mentioned there are some important dates that we should know mm -hmm. regarding um, uh, our credit cards. Mm -hmm. So what are, the, what are the three important dates we should remember as it relates to our credit cards? So the first one, um, which you should know at the bat, is your payment due date, right? So that's basically when, um, for, for installment loans, it's just basically when that specific payment is due. So that that monthly payment that you have due, that, that's the date for that, you know? And then for your um, revolving credit, it is um, based on um, the fee, it's a 25 to 35 minimum payment fee. So the, the payment due date is based on that minimum payment, you know, fee. Um, so if you don't pay that minimum payment, then you will be subjected to um, a late fee. So, and I know late fees are up to like $38 now. Right. So, um, yeah. And, so, and in most cases, depending on the financial institution, will determine what the minimum payment's going to be. It could be as low as $25, where you can't pay anything less. You know, you have to, so you don't draw it out. 
or it's a 2%, 1%, 3% of the balance. And so if it's 3% of the balance and your balance is $100, you know, $100, you have to pay at least $25. But if it's $100,000, you have to pay $3,000, right? Okay. Correct. So that, that's, that's an example of the minimum payment. So the due date is one of the important dates. What's the next important date? The next important date is the billing cycle end date, right? So the billing cycle end date is the day that you, is, is basically the end of the gap period that they give you in order to pay that balance from the previous um, period. Mm -hmm. um, and that, if you don't pay, make payments, you know, by that date, you'll be subjected to a late fee on top of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, right. On top of the, the monthly interest that you accrue if you do not make that payment. Yes. I agree. The billing cycle date is extremely important. And when we go to the next question, I'm going to explain to you why that billing cycle date, you need to know that. Mm -hmm. that, that, that could be a game changer for you with increasing your credit score. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So what's the third date that's very important? And the third date that is very important is the reporting date. So that is the date that the credit card company or the lender, the day that they report to the credit bureaus. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, once you figure that out, that will help you um, avoid, um, you know, avoid a drop in your score, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're above that 30% um, usage, mm -hmm. right, um, your, your score can go down based on what they report. So right. say you have a, so say if you're, you know, you have a hundred dollar limit, right, on your credit card mm -hmm. and, you know, you use 35 of the hundred dollars. And if once they report on that, that specific day that you use 35%, right, you can see a drop in your score if it's, if it's above, you know, 30%. And so speaking of that, let, let's talk about, well, one, let's recap. One, we have the, uh, the payment due date, the billing cycle date, and then the, credit, the, then the credit reporting date of when they report, right? And then you mentioned, you know, how that affects the credit score. So let's go into talking about that. This is the fun part for me. Let's talk about the anatomy of a credit score. And I talk about this in one of my training sessions. So I'm going to give you a high-level overview of this mm -hmm. that I want you to share. So what are the, um, what is the anatomy of the credit score and share with them and then I'm going to add my two cents. Sure. So I like the easiest way to remember it is the, with the numbers, the percentages. So I like to say, you know, 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, right? So the first 35% is based on your payment history. So basically, are you paying your bills on time, right? And for your payment history, uh, for revolving credit, for credit cards, all you have to pay is that minimum balance, whatever that minimum payment is, in order for you to be okay within that, you know, that 35% of your payment history, you have to make that minimum, that minimum balance payment, which I advise everyone to pay their bills in full, you know, so they won't have to worry about just minimum payments. Um, but 35% goes with the payment history. Um, then the 30% is allocated to your total usage. Um, so like we discussed earlier, are you using below 30% of your total usage of your, your, your credit? Um, and that spans within, you know, all your, all your cards, not just one card. So are you using less than 30% of all of your cards compared to how much they have given you in terms of your, um, your, your limits? Mm -hmm. um, and then we have 15 percent uh, which is allocated to your credit history so basically how long have you had credit right and i know for me i i'm a newbie to credit really you know um, i'm 26 years old so i didn't really get my first credit card until like probably like four years ago so um i'm not really that strong in that in that area i know it's like probably like five to seven seven years is a good you know, good. Yeah, I'm good way, time. way. So I'm, I am like a fine wine with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we have your um, ten percent, which is new credit. Um, so new credit, basically, it kind of correlates to your credit history, because if you, um, 
if you open too many accounts within a short period of time, that can affect your score, mm -hmm. right? But the reason I say it correlates to your credit history, that 15%, is because if you open those, you know, those cards or credit within a short period of time, that can bring down your history, your length of, of credit history. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have the last 10%, which is credit diversity. So basically, do you have a healthy mix of installment loans mm -hmm. and revolving credit? Awesome. So what he said. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit to, he, he gave you a lot, the skeleton and a little bit of the meat on there. I'm just going to fatten you up a little bit. All right. So, you know, as my friend Ash Cash says, 35, 30, 15, 10, 10, 35, 30, 15, 10, 10. Just remember that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is a game changer because you can change your credit score if you understand how to manipulate those categories. Right. So 35% payment history, pay it on time. Just pay your bills on time. That's all you gotta do, okay? So here's the thing. If you become late on, a, on, on anything, it negatively affects 35% of your score. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter if it's $5, $50, $5,000, it's gonna affect the same way. If it's negative, it's gonna hurt you the same way. Okay, it's gonna feel the same pill. It's gonna feel the same pain, like you gash your arm or gash your leg or whatever. Okay, it's just gonna hurt you. All right, and then it's gonna take over time to rebuild and heal. Okay, so it's just like it, for me, at least for me, it's easier for me to gain weight. But you know, I know I put that in the universe. It's easy for me to lose weight. It's easy for me to lose weight. It's easy for me to how to put that in the universe. Okay. But sometimes it could be a little bit more challenging, require a little bit more work to lose the weight, right? So it's the same thing. So paid bills on time helps 35% of the score. 30% of the score is based on utilization. Now there is a lot of controversy, a lot of um, you know, uh, difference of opinion. Some people say keep your balances below 30%. Some people say get it below 10%. Some say 50%. The rule of thumb is 30% because that's more realistic. If you can keep your balances below 30% and these are on revolving lines of credit, mm -hmm. anything that has a credit limit. So that includes your credit cards. That includes the line of credits. That includes the HELOCs, the personal lines of credits. So anything that has a line of credit or a credit limit where you can use it, uh, fluctuate the usage of it, it's looking at that utilization. So if you're maxed out on everything, what that tells the financial institution is you are not responsible with credit. So if you're maxed out on all your credit cards, one, that's going to hurt your credit score. And then two, as a financial institution, I'm going to say, no, they don't know how to handle, you know, the credit. Okay. So like I tell y'all all the time, credit cards, credit is like sex. Yes, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And if you do, use protection, a budget, okay? I say that all the time and I mean it, okay? Financial fornication, I'm just saying, all right? Utilization. You mentioned the next one was the age. How long have you had credit? How was your experience with credit? Do you just have a few years or do you have lots of years like me? I'm not gonna tell you how many years that is, all right? The other 10, it's diversity. Do you have experience with different types of credit? Or are you just that, you know, $500 loan and then you paid off and then another $500 loan and then paid off? Or you have student loans that are in forbearance that you never pay, but you have a 700 score because you just have student loans that's there. Do you have experience with a mortgage? Do you have experience with an auto loan, with credit cards, with installment loans? Financial institutions want to see that you have experience dealing with and being responsible with diversity or different types of credit. That's why it affects 15% of, or 10 percent of your score then the other 10 percent he mentioned was the new credit the new credit how many people and that includes inquiry how many people do you have looking at your credit cookies are you going out there shopping for credit because if you're going out there shopping for credit and you have all of these inquiries within a 24 month period of time i as a financial institution i'm going to think that you're shopping for credit and then as soon as you get it you're going to max everything out so i'm going to be very very cautious about someone that's going to every department store in a short period of time because they're shopping for credit okay that gives financial institutions a red sign and also how many new accounts did you open did you open up two new department 10 new department store cards that's going to be a red sign. And if you open up too many accounts within a short period of time, that's going to negatively affect your credit. So if you can pay your bills on time, keep your revolving balances low, as low as possible, 
you know, take your time and have some experience with credit, have some diversity in your credit, and you avoid having too much new credit at a you know short period of time, you can have any credit score that you want. Mm -hmm. Really? You agree? I agree. Okay. Enough about me. Let's talk about you. All right. <laughs> so we talked about the anatomy of a credit score. We talked about the three important dates. Um, oh yeah, let's get back to that three important dates. Wanted to mention something, Anthony. Mm -hmm. when we talk about, with some financial institutions, um, the billing cycle date and the reporting date. Now they may report to the credit reporting agency, say on the 30th of every month or the first of every month, but you have to find out what balance are they reporting? Are they reporting it as of the credit reporting date or are they reporting it based on the billing cycle date? Because mm -hmm. most financial institutions will report on the reporting date what the balance was on the billing cycle date. Okay, so if your balance is, if your credit limit is a thousand and your balance was a thousand, but at the billing cycle date on the 15th, but you paid it off on the 17th, their, bill, their, their credit reporting date may look at the billing cycle date and show that you have a thousand dollar balance, which will hurt your credit score. So once you are armed with that information, you can ask those questions to your credit card processor or your financial institution to find out what balance are you reporting? Are you reporting the balance as of the, the date when you report to the credit bureau? Or are you reporting it as of the billing cycle date, the next billing cycle date? Okay. That's a good point. Just wanted to make that clarification. Okay, so if we have a low credit score, what can we do to rebuild the credit score? I think I talked a little bit about that, but what are some other things that you can think of that we can do to rebuild our credit score? So one thing, um, what I would do if I have a low credit score, I would um, really connect with someone who has good credit history and potentially be on their account. So um, as an authorized user. Okay, to, okay, to, yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> this is where we're going to agree and disagree. Okay. Well, we got to be careful with that. Okay. If it's mm -hmm. a family member, yes. A stranger, no. No, no, no. Hey, you're not a stranger. And, but if you are an authorized user, you have to be careful because most financial institutions don't report authorized users onto the authorized user's credit report. There mm -hmm. are some credit, um, cr uh, credit card companies that do that, but they show you as an authorized user. So as a financial institution, I am not, um, you, you are not obligated. You are not fiscally mm -hmm. obligated to that loan. So I won't count that. It may help your score, but I may not count that as it being experienced, what I call thin file. So if you're going to do that and it's with a family member to be a, co a joint owner and they're good with credit and they're making payments on time, definitely with a family member. Um, but strangers, there are several organizations that will sell that. I, I wouldn't recommend that because you don't know them. And if anything should happen, you, there's no recourse or whatever. So just be careful with that. But I understand your point with connecting with someone that, you know, as a co-signer, definitely yeah. if you are millennial going with your parents. parents yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I would, yeah, definitely someone that, you know, a family member. Yeah. Not, not anyone off the street. Right. We have to, we have to be clear about that because some people will be like, <laughs> Hey, can I get on your credit? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and another way is through a, sec a secured card. Um, that's where you just, you know, put a, an amount up front and that would be your, your limit. Right. And they're just, the, the bank wants to, wants to see if you are simply responsible. Like, right. you know, can you use this card with, you know, your money and it's secured by the money that you put up front. Exactly. So basically that's a, a great way to, um, to build your, your credit. I absolutely agree with you. And it, you know, if you can't afford to save 300, $500, you probably can't afford to have credit. So, <laughs> you know, save that $500, use that as collateral for your credit card. And the reason why financial institutions like those kind of cards is zero risk for us. Uh -huh. So if you choose not to pay, we're just going to take your $500 and pay the credit card off. So there's no risk to us. But it, this does help you to rebuild your credit as long as you pay it on time and keep that balance below the 30% like we talked about, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Anything else? Um, that's all I can think of as, okay. as of right now. 
th those mm -hmm. are two quick ways and, and yeah, you know okay. especially you know because you you y'all are lit lituation um <laughs> with the millennials <laughs> that is a really good way to start building credit and start um rebuilding your credit is you know become a co-signer or a joint on a parent's card or let them be a joint on your card and they may pay for it um, or, you know, uh, do a secured credit card. I think that's the best way because now you can show that you are responsible with yeah. that line of credit. And those are both safe ways as well. Very, very safe ways. No. Very, very safe ways. So, you know, we're talking about credit cards and all of that and secured cards. What should we do to, or how should we go about finding the right credit card? Um, I think it should start with your goals. So, why am I getting a credit card? It should be the number one question you should ask before you get a credit card. Yes. Um, is it to build credit, right? If you already built credit, is it to use it for, you know, cash back purposes? Is it you, to use it for travel reward points? You know, yes. what is the purpose of you getting this card, right? Um, I know a lot of times, you know, for, especially for store credit cards, I, I feel like a lot of people just, get them because they just want an item that day mm -hmm. and it's just like oh let me just apply for this card but there's no really it's not a goal a specific goal behind it it's just at you know the spare of the moment you know mm -hmm. but when you when you set a goal you know what am i using this card for um before you even apply for the card that's a good strategy to use when you're trying to choose the right card that fits you i absolutely agree with you on that one um that is very important anytime you're talking about getting credit cards or getting into debt is you you have to have a purpose for it why are you getting this one of my clients I had was talking about well I need to get another credit card and I said well why are you getting another credit card well you know I just want to have credit why <laughs> for what you know um, what is the purpose of it because if you don't have a purpose for it you're going to use it for nonsense mm -hmm. and because it's there you know, some people use credit because it's there. They have the cash, but they just use the credit. And then all of a sudden that, you know, that access, that leverage now becomes that lifesaver, that, that, you know, anchor on there. So when you have a purpose for it, you then use it responsibly because you know what you're using it for. If you don't, then, then you won't. So um, we have a question um, from the class. Can Fingerhut account help build your credit? <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, depending, I've, I've never had a Fingerhut account. My parents have, I never had. It, 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 they report on your credit report. I don't know if they report as a line of credit. I believe they report that you have a specific line of credit. The problem is, is that with, with Fingerhut, you know, most of the time, the purpose is to get everything that you want and pay it over time. So most people are at the limit of it, right? And then they're only paying the minimum payment of it. And so one, it lasts a long time. I don't think that fiscally, I don't think it's a good idea, but you know, for convenience sakes, you can do that. But it also reports as an installment loan or um, it's not a traditional financial institution. Okay, so it's because it's an untraditional financial institution, it could potentially negatively affect the credit score because of the type of creditor it is, okay? Um, but if you have a limit that's 5000 and you only have a balance of $1,000, um, that could help you because you utilization and you're paying it off. I, with, those credit, with those and other credit cards, I say don't just pay the minimum payment. Pay as much as you can. Pay it off as quickly as you can. Why give the financial institution all that money and interest? Why give your money away? You know, and I also say that if you have a credit card, whether it's Fingerhut or whether it's any, anyone else, if you're going to use it for a 30, you know, I use it for um, points, like you mentioned, purpose. Yeah, purpose. I, I want my points because I know I want to travel, right? But I'm not going to buy something that I can't pay off within a three-month period of time because if you pay it off within the month, it doesn't matter what interest rate it is. It could be 50%. If you pay it off within that 30-day period of time, there's no interest. Yeah, we're, 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 like, so exactly. if, relatively, if you pay your car, if you use it, pay it off, use it, pay it off, you have an interest-free loan regardless of what the interest rate is, right? Yep. The problem is when you have a 30% or 35% credit card and you only pay the minimal balance you gonna be retired still paying on that balance two thousand dollar balance come on now yeah. okay i'm sorry what other That's ones you have <laughs> what, what other tips do you have about choosing the right credit card um i like like i said you know what what would i gain from you know having having this card um 
and, and just the purpose behind it. I think I think that's the main the main point. Uh, my my, I remember my first credit card was actually a store credit card, and I don't really have any any purpose behind it. I just made I, I, I just made it. You know, got the card just to, you know, swipe it to make that purchase for that day, and I never used the card since because I was late. You know, <laughs> with the balance, it was only a, like a a sixty dollar balance, and I didn't even know I had it. You know. Because I wasn't aware, right? You no, know, I didn't have any alerts, you know, coming in that, you know, that I had it. I wasn't paying attention. That was my fault. Um, so basically, it was ninety days late, and yeah, so it really tanked. And, my and, and that's a good point because, especially during Christmas time, Black Friday, whatever, they're always saying, "Hey, get ten percent off of your purchase if you apply for the loan." So I need you all to do the math here, okay? <laughs> if you have a three thir- a $300 purpose purchase and you are going to get a credit card and get 10% off of that 10% is $30 $270 right now you're going to put it on a card you're probably not going to pay it off so the interest rate is more than likely going to be about 20 to 30% and you're probably going to revolve the balance which is save 10% does the math add up to you it kind of doesn't for me, but you say 10%, but you're going to spend 30% on those purchases. Yeah, I need y'all to think about the math before you go into it. Now, if you get 10% and you put it on the card and you pay it off, that might work for you. Hmm. That, that might just work. But if you revolve the balance, you've completely defeated the purpose of the discount. Yeah, I always say don't let these companies win, man. Credit cards are you should use them as a tool to benefit you only, right? So interest rates, late fees shouldn't even matter. It shouldn't even be in, you know, you should be aware of them, but it shouldn't even be in your vocabulary because you are using it for a specific purpose. It's used for a specific, you know, gain and a, a benefit to you. Right. Um, now, as a financial institution, I do have to do this, you know, uh, disclaimer is that credit is not bad. Credit is not bad. Credit is good. It's just how we use it. Okay. It, it is good. Uh, Matter of money, financial fornication, credit is like sex. It is not bad. It is very good. But if you're not responsible, if you don't protect yourself, and if you're not mature with it, it could be very painful and can ultimately kill you if you're not careful. So you just got to be very careful about credit, but credit is good. Credit is good. It's just how we use it. Okay. And so on the same, on the same note, I wanted to mention, what did I want to say? Um, when we were talking about credit and the interest, oh yeah. Now some, some of the fees are what's called behavioral fees. Okay. Behavioral fees. It's just like if you go to any bank or credit union and there are fees there, if you don't like the fee, don't do the behavior. Okay, so for example, courtesy pay fee or overdraft fee. If you don't like the fee, you know, after you swipe for $5, but they charge you $30, if you don't like the fee, balance your daggone account or balance your checkbook. Don't do the behavior, don't overdraw your account. If you don't like the NSF fees, don't write bad checks. If you don't like late fees, don't be late. If you don't like overdrive over the limit fees, don't go over the limit. So some of those are, are behavioral fee, uh, behavioral fees. If you don't like the fee, don't do the behavior and you'll never have to worry about the fee. Now there are some other fees, like, uh, maintenance fees, annual fees, and you can find different financial institutions where you can find one that doesn't have an annual fee um, and they don't have this or whatever. But those behavioral fees, Avoid those as much as possible. Just do what you, you grow. We grown. Do what you're supposed to do and avoid the fee, right? You agree, Anthony? I agree, absolutely agree. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So um, why is your credit report, why do you feel the credit report is more important than the credit score itself? So I, I like to think of it like this. You know, when we were in grade school, even high school, right? We had a, we got a report card, Right. So we have our grades, one section, and then we had a comment section, you know, and, you know, we always looked at the grades. Oh my God, I got a C. Well, depending on the type of student you were. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I got a, you know, a B or A minus or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But just looking at the score, we couldn't, we, it's, it's hard for us to improve the next, you know, semester or the next quarter mm -hmm. because 
we are unfamiliar with, you know, with what was got us there, you know? Right. So it's important to look at the comment section as well because your teacher may have put something in the comment section that will help you, you know, bounce back from that, that grade that you, you know, dr dreaded. So, awesome. um, so the, cred the credit report is just like that comment section. So the credit report is basically telling you what you need to improve in order for your score to increase, right? So we focus so much on the score. Oh my God, I got a 500 credit score. Oh my God, I got a 660. And we don't look at, you know, the comments. We, we can't improve our score. Absolutely. I love that. I love that analogy. I also say that the credit score is your financial grade mm -hmm. and your credit report is the actual uh, 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 syllabi or syllabus, okay? And, and it shows your work. So it's the same thing that you said, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for me to improve my grade, I have to go back to my work on that assignment where I got the grade or affected my grade to find out what I did um, to get that grade. And if I want to improve the score, I have to improve the content exactly. of that, right? So, you know, most people, they're like, I got an A, I got a B, I got a C. Well, what got you the A? Well, this report got me the A. Well, what did you do good? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I got an F. What did you, why did you get an F? Because I didn't do this, this, this in the assignment. Well, if you do this, this, this in the assignment, then you'll get a B or you'll get an A. So it's the same thing with the credit report based on what you're saying is that as long as we look at the content and we understand how to fix the content in our financial grade book, that's the credit report, then we can fix our financial grade, mm -hmm. the credit score. Because the credit score is just a picture. It's a snapshot. Is a snapshot calculation of when it's pulled at that particular time. And it changes, it ch ever, ever changes. Like I'm having a good hair day, I could have a bad hair day, right? Depending on, and that's why, oh yeah. So everybody does a selfie, right? <laughs> so y'all know when we do selfies, females, y'all y'all feel me on this. When we do selfies, we probably taking about good 10, 20 pictures, right? But there's only one that we're gonna show on Facebook. Okay, so the one we choose that we show to the world, that is the credit score. Okay, so with, whichever. Now you have some friends that will take 20 pictures of you, 20 pictures of you, and for whatever reason, they post the most godforsaken ugly picture of you. Okay, and so that it's you, it's just a bad side of you. But that is an example of when people pull your credit report, they're just picking one of those selfies out and showing you what you look like at that specific period of time. Okay, so cool. Next. And so in order, you can um, actually obtain your um, credit reports at an annualcreditreport.com for yes. free, right? So I don't know any other websites out there um, that charge you for any, you know, credit reports, but for free, annualcreditreport.com. Well, annualcreditreport.com credit, annual allows you to have one um, free copy of your report from each of the major credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, okay? And in some states, it allows you two. Now, if you want to say, I want to look at my credit report on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, anything outside of that one through annualcreditreport.com, you're going to have to pay for so mm -hmm. even if you go to the made the three major credit reporting agencies from their websites and pull the credit report, or even if it's through Credit Karma, through um, through any of the other ones, you may you, you're gonna you may get a fee. Now the only other way to get it for free is if you applied for credit and you were denied credit. That allows you access to your free credit report so that you can see why you were denied. Okay, so you know you, you got your free credit report in January. You applied for it in March, but you got denied. You can get another free credit report. Only the credit report that the financial institution used to make their decision that may have declined. Yeah, and and a lot of experts say you know you should check it you know every every four months you know so you can get it from each each of the credit each of the three major credit bureaus, um, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, um, but. I mean, you can you can do it within um, within a two times a two times a year, like the first half of the yeah. year and the second half of the year, just to check. You know, I, who knows? Things may happen every every four months, but typically, you know, twice a year is, is a pretty good. Yeah, I, I agree with you that you know once or you know once at least at minimum annually. 
a minimal annually um, or semi semi annually. I, I agree with you there. It, mm. It's not necessary to do it monthly or quarterly unless you're, you're trying to do something very major, like you're close to the process of um, buying a home. So you have to make sure there are certain things or you're disputing. So you have to make sure certain things are off or what the status is. But just as a financial checkup, you want to do it at least um, annually. And you do that when you're doing your financial checkup with when you're looking at your beneficiaries, updating those, um, updating or closing some accounts that are dormant, um, your insurance policies, making sure the beneficiaries are updated there, mm -hmm. especially if you had a life changing event, um, a marriage, divorce, death, baby. Um, so, you know, while you're doing those updates, do them at one time and pull your credit report and see what it's like. If you've never seen your credit report and never pulled it, I encourage you, Anthony, and I encourage you to do it tonight. Annualcreditreport.com. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff, Anthony. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have a few more minutes. Let's talk about what is and what is not on our credit reports. Um, I talk about this frequently and I also talk about this in a class that I'm going to tell everybody about. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what are some things that are not on the credit report. So the things that are, are not on the credit report is um, basically your very personal information. So um, I don't believe your, your social security. Yes, it is. It is on your credit report? It is. Um, what is, I'm trying to think what, so I know your, um, your history in terms of where you live um, mm -hmm. is on your credit report. Um, the things um, in here, terms here, of. Well, here are some things that are not on your credit report. Um, your income is not on your credit report. Yep, yep, yep. Um, your job is on your credit report. It does show employment history on there, okay? Um, and collectors use that information to to find if you are, you know, employed, if you are, you know, mm. if they're trying to collect on you. And they, they, it's called skip tracing, okay? Um, your your faith, uh, anything dealing with your religion, your anything dealing with your association, your race is not on, you know, so your credit report doesn't tell if you're African-American, Caucasian, you know, Hispanic. It, it doesn't. It doesn't provide that information. Now, your name may give it away, but it does not say, you know, this is an African American, this is Caucasian, or whatever. So, your race, your religion, um, any affiliation associations, your criminal record is not on your your credit report at all. Um, if you, if you went to court for money issues and it like embezzlement and you have a lien or a judgment, that is gonna show up on your credit report, but not if you, you know, had a misdemeanor or, you, you know, mm -hmm. you were in jail for whatever, that's not gonna show up on your credit report. Yeah, okay. and so just anything in terms of your, fin your financial history um, and your personal history, except the things that, you know, you just talked about, is basically on, on your report, so, you know, Every every place where you receive mail, that is on on your credit report. Um, from you know any credit history, any loan history, anything of the that nature is 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 on your your report. I agree with you. So your your name, your addresses, your your um not your sometimes your phone numbers may be there. I'm not sure. Um, your your date of birth is on there. Um. Your, your performance on all. So financial institutions will tell your business, okay? Let me tell y'all, your credit report is like a financial Facebook. And if you do them wrong, they will tell your business on that credit report. If you do them right, they will tell your business on your credit report. So you have to determine what story you want that financial institution to tell the world that looks at your credit cookies, okay? So you may not like them, it may be, you know, I'm just for that, I'm not gonna pay them or whatever. But when you try to go get that house, that other financial institution's mm -hmm. gonna be like, nah, dude, you, you kinda cheated on that other financial institution. If you gonna cheat on them, why? what makes me think you ain't gonna cheat on me? They tell your financial business. So you have to be very careful or you have to clean up the story that they're telling mm -hmm. on your credit report. Not yeah. saying, I'm just saying. Want to know how? <laughs> Financial fornication. 
<laughs> major plug, major plug. Okay, cool. So the last question I have is, what if we see some incorrect information on our credit report? We pull our credit report and we, we see some an address that's not ours or it's a variation in the name or you know, there are some accounts on here that you're not aware of or whatever. What, what happens if we had see some in, incorrect information? So you should contact two entities. So the first um, entity you should contact is the actual credit bureau in which you see that, that error. And, um, and you should dispute that specific error. Um, you, can, you can email them, you can call them, you can, but it's best, I think it's best to put it in writing. You know, anything in writing, you know, is, is safe on your end, you know, so nothing can get lost, in, you know, in the sauce. Um, so making sure you contact the credit bureau and what you see that error in, um, that's the first, um, you know, entity you should contact. And the second entity is the actual lender. So the actual, actual credit card company, you know, you should be in contact um, with in terms of seeing, you know, you know, why is this on my report? You know, is it, is it, is it true? You know, well, you know, if, it was, if, if it's true or not, but just to, you know, just to be certain to contact, you know, the, um, the lender to see, you know, about any errors. Okay, cool. And, and I provide um, a class on that. It's the five secrets and the five ways to clean up your credit. <clears throat> So I give you some specifics and some details on how to clean up your credit. And for those that are, that are tuned into this class, you get a special um, discount on the class. It's, it's very minimal anyway. You probably went to the bar and drank it anyway, but I even discounted it even more. So you get $20 off tonight. And so it's, I tell you, it's less than $20 for just tonight. So you can not only get the information you learned from Anthony here, but I'm providing you with some additional information on how to clean up your credit, the five secrets, the five ways to clean up your credit. Um, and you know, one of them is, is what he was talking about, is to put it in writing. And I'm gonna give you some free resources of where you can get sample letters, um, sample information, get, you know, learn more about how you can dispute it and you can DIY, you can do it yourself. So you don't have to pay a credit repair company hundreds and thousands of dollars to do something you can do yourself. So I'm going to show you how to do that and tell you the best way how to do that. Anthony, how can people get in contact with you, especially these millennials? They need to talk to you, boo. <laughs> so <coughs> I, I am, so my website is uh, financialliteration.com with two L's. Um, so F I N A C N C I L Lituation L I T U A T I O N same spelling as situation but lit dot com um, and I'm on I'm active on Twitter I'm active on Instagram those are my two main um, social medias I'm still learning on Facebook but the great um, thing was is I, we you found me on on Twitter on Twitter yep yeah you started I, participating in my cash chats yep every every Every, Every Friday. Friday yep. Well, um, thank you so much for your support on the cash chats. I really appreciate that. No problem. Thank you for hosting them. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So make sure you hook up with Anthony Copeman, um, Financial Lituation, at Financial Lituation, um, through social media, Instagram. And Instagram is uh, well, well, Anthony.Copeman. Well, both of them are my name. Oh, both they're both your name? name? Yep, Anthony Copeman. Anthony Copeman. So make sure you go find him, Anthony Copeman, C O P E M A N. And especially if you have millennials, if you know millennials, make sure you connect them to financial lituation. I still can't believe I didn't figure that out. I feel so old. Yeah. Okay. So, Anthony, I have something special for my class this evening. I've been talking about my book for, you know, a long time. I'm like, y'all need to get the book. So I'm feeling a little generous. I have five books, uh -oh. five books that I am giving away tonight. Okay. I'm giving the books away for free. The only thing you got to pay for is $3 so I can ship it to you. I am not paying to ship wow. it to you, but I am going to give five books away. I'm feeling generous because the law of attraction is when I give, I get. I, so I'm feeling generous today, y'all. So how can you get your book? How can I get this book? 
girl, I need this book. I need to find out about them financial STDs. There was some substantially tremendous debt. I need to figure out how I can date my bank and I can have a healthy financial relationship and stop getting my assets kicked by my bank. Man, how can I do that? This is what you need to do. Very simple. The first five people, first five people that emails me their name and their address and their email, because you all are going to pay the three dollars, just three dollars to ship it. The first five people that do that, you get my book. Now, where do you send it? Name, address, email. You can put your phone number. I'll call you, say hi but at least your name, address, and e email. And just in the title, put financial fornication. Send it to info, I-N-F-O, at madammoney.com. M-A-D-A-M-M-O-N-E-Y.com, okay? Go. Info at madammoney.com. Put in the subject, financial fornication. Give me your name, address, your email, phone number. If you want me to call you, say hi. Send it to me. Pay $3.00. I'm going to send you your book and I'm going to autograph it for you uh -oh. because my signature is going to be worth so much money. And you're going to say, oh my God, I have an autographed copy of her book when she was just on Facebook because I'm going to be on TV and then everybody's going to be like, oh, oh, will you come talk to me and all that? And um, yeah, okay. That's what I'm putting in the universe, y'all. Work with me. Work with me. That's what you put in the universe. Right, Anthony? Yep, exactly. You tell the you universe what that. you want. Exactly. Like, Anthony's going to be the man. You know what I'm saying? You know, what, what's that Dave? What, what Dave Ramsey? Look out. <laughs> He's the black millennial Dave Ramsey. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if that was a compliment <laughs> or not. <laughs> All right, Anthony. Again, you want the book. What do you got to do? Financial fornication. Email me. Info at madammoney.com, name, address, email, and phone number. Thank you so much, Anthony, for Thank joining us. I appreciate everything you're doing out there for millennial money, for young money. We're going to have to do this again and talk more millennial money. Definitely. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Again, if you want to learn more about Anthony Copeman, go to financiallituationlituation.com. Hit him up on Instagram. Yo, next week is going to be hot. We're going to be talking to Dorothea. Dorothea, is going, we're going to talk about career and money. You're a professional. You want to make some more money? We're going to be talking about that, so make sure you tune in. Thank you all so much. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it, but guess what? I want to know, how much did you spend today? <laughs>